Hi, my name is Kristen Madden. As the archivist at the History Museum, I know that photos are a great way to document our history. From a 1920s photo of a child playing in the snow to a digital image of a new business opening, pictures help tell our history. Please join me as we take a look back at some of the vintage photos in our collection. Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the history of scouting uh, in the nation and also in the area. The Maidens of the Holy Grail was the young ladies branch of the Knights of the Holy Grail. The group focused on promoting a pure body, mind, and spirit in people, especially young men and women. It encouraged routines that were meant to awaken a sense of responsibility toward the community and state that would continue throughout their lives. The Maidens and Squires, the young boys branch, were often cited in the newspaper having events alongside the newly developed Boy Scouts of America. The group seems to have been active from around 1908 to the early 1920s. The group disbanding may have been partially due to the popularity of the Boy Scouts and the introduction of other Girl Scouting groups like the Campfire Girls and Julia Gordon Lowe's Girl Scouts of America. The Boy Scouts of America has its origins with Robert Stevenson Smythe Baden-Powell, a British Army officer who served in India and during the Boer War in the early 20th century. He wrote a handbook on scouting after realizing that many of his men lacked basic survival skills. The booklet became extremely popular with boys in England, and in 1908, Baden-Powell formed the Boy Scouts Association in England. In 1910, Chicago businessman William Boyce incorporated the Boy Scouts of America. The same year, the Boy Scouts Council was formed in New York City, and their headquarters opened the following year. The first troop in Indiana was established in 1910. Indianapolis's Troop 9 was led by F. O. Beltzer, making it one of the first troops in America. Troops in Knox and Plymouth followed in 1912, and the South Bend Council was incorporated in 1919, followed by the Elkhart Council in 1920, and Mishawaka in 1922. In 1952, the St. Joseph Valley Council merged with Mishawaka's Council, and then in 1973, all Northern Indiana banded together to make one. The current LaSalle Council was formed in 1999 when Cass and Berrien counties in southwestern Michigan joined the organization. Today's council oversees six Indiana counties and two Michigan counties. In 1912, Arthur Rose Eldred of New York became the first Eagle Scout. In 1916, the Order of the Arrow, the Honor Society of the Boy Scouts of America, intended to recognize older Scouts in their teens who best exemplify the Scout virtues of cheerful service, camping, and leadership was founded. Also that year, the Boy Scouts were awarded a Congressional Charter. In 1980, fashion designer Oscar de la Renta donated his services for a two-year program of remaking all uniforms for Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, Explorers, and both men and women adult scouters. It continued to be the uniform until August 2008 when the Centennial Scout uniform was unveiled. Since its beginnings, the Boy Scouts have played a role in the most pivotal moments in American history. During World War I, the Scouts sold more than $355 million in Liberty Bonds and war saving stamps. And they collected railroad cards full of peach pits to be used to make gas masks. During the Depression, they collected clothing, food, and other supplies to help the struggling masses. In the 1940s, the Scouts collected 30 million pounds of rubber in only two weeks. In 1910, young girls in Thetford, Vermont, watched their male friends and family practice for their parts in the community's 150th anniversary. The pageant's organizer, William Langdon, promised the girls that they would also have a part to play in the pageant. Langdon consulted with a local doctor, Luther Gulrich, about creating a girls' group that was much like the Boy Scouts. Gulick was friends with the Boy Scouts executive secretary, James West. With the help of Gulick and his wife, 
Langman started the Campfire Girls, though it would not be formally incorporated until 1912. The group was approached by several other Girl Scouting groups, including Juliet Gordon Lowe's Girl Scouts, where they proposed mergers, but for various reasons, these mergers never occurred. The first official Campfire Handbook was published in 1913. During World War I, Campfire Girls helped sell over $1 million in Liberty Bonds and over 900000 in thrift stamps. 55,000 girls helped support French and Belgian orphans, and an estimated 68,000 girls earned honors by conservation of food. The first Campfire Council was formed in 1918 in Kansas City. In 1977, it would become the national headquarters for them. The group celebrated its 50th anniversary in 1916 with a program called She Cares, Do You? During the project, the group planted more than 2 million trees, built 13,000 birdhouses, and completed several other conservation-oriented tasks. In 1969, Campfire Girls were allowed to be participants in the Boy Scouts Explorer posts for boys 14 and older. This arrangement ended in 1971 when the Boy Scouts made Explorers a co-ed program. Campfire expanded in 1975, welcoming boys to participate in all campfire activities. While boys were invited to Campfire Girls Horizons conferences in the late 1960s and early 1970s, official membership was not offered them until 1975 when the organization became co-educational. Campfire decided boys and girls should be together in one organization so they learn to play and work alongside each other and appreciate their similarities and differences in positive ways. Girl Guides of America started in 1912 when Juliet Gordon Lowe organized the first troop meeting in Savannah, Georgia. She envisioned an organization that would bring girls out of their homes to serve their communities, experience the outdoors, and have the opportunity to develop self-reliance and resourcefulness. In 1913, the group changed its name to the Girl Scouts of the United States and moved its headquarters to Washington, D.C. In 1915, the organization was incorporated and the national headquarters was moved to New York City. The group officially became the Girl Scouts of America in 1947 and was given a congressional charter in 1950. During World War II, many young Japanese American girls were confined in internment camps with their families. Girl Scout troops were organized, even in these camps. The girls participated in many activities, including dramatic presentations that took place in the Crystal City internment camp in Crystal City, Texas. Most Girl Scout units were originally segregated by race according to state and local laws and customs. The first African American troop was founded in 1917. The first Native American troop was formed in New York State in 1921 and the first troop of Mexican Americans was formed in Houston, Texas in 1922. The first African American troop in the South was founded in 1932 in Richmond, Virginia by Lena Watson and met in Harshorn Hall at Virginia Union University. By the 1950s, the Girl Scouts had begun significant national effort to desegregate Girl Scout camps and maintain racial balance. One of the first desegregated camps was in 1956 at Camp Shanatuck in Kentucky. Later the same year, Martin Luther King Jr. described the Girl Scouts as a force of desegregation. During the 1980s, the Girl Scouts began speaking out about many serious issues that young girls faced, including drug use, child abuse, and teen pregnancy. In the 1990s, the group introduced their Right to Read service program to help tackle illiteracy in communities. In the 1910s, the Girl Scouts joined with Google for Made with Code, a program encouraging girls to get an early start in the computer sciences. Thank you for joining me today. This program is a part of our Look Back series. You can find more vintage photos at historymuseumsb.org. Just click on the Look Back icon on our homepage. We're always interested in adding more images to our archives, whether photographs or digitals, from 100 years ago or today. So please contact me if you're interested in donating to our collection. See you next time.